I understand you met uh, Whitney Houston back in 2004 after being introduced by Stevie Wonder and, and began working with her. What kind of a shape was her voice in back then? Uh, when I went to see her in Atlanta, her voice was in a horrible condition. I mean, her speaking voice and her singing voice were both hoarse. She had about one audible tone in her lower register. I was, I was horrified. You know, I had this image of her being a young, beautiful lady with this incredible voice. And here she is sitting in front of me with no voice whatsoever. And how does that happen? I mean, obviously her, her battles with drugs were, were, were very public. Is, is it from that? Well, when you think about it, Anderson, you, you know, if you're a singer, your body is your instrument, and you have to take care of it. And uh, whatever lifestyle choices she made obviously had a negative effect on her voice. Or were there it's actual, were there, I mean, I just interviewed Adele who had a, uh, you know, a, a polyp in her throat that had hemorrhage. It, was, it, was there actual structural issues, or was it just a toll that abuse had taken? Well, I think that it was generally abused, but you know, her voice began recovering very quickly from, from vocal exercising, so that told me a great deal. A lot of her injury was, was superficial, or else her voice would not have returned as quickly as it did. And every lesson that we had, her voice got better and better and better each time. For, for an artist known for her voice as the voice, I mean, to not be able to, to, to use that instrument in the way that she once could, what was that like for her? You have to realize, Anderson, a singer is a very special kind of musician. You, know, you are your voice. It's a part of your personality. It's a part of your emotions. It's a part of your spirituality. And to have that taken away from you is a very profound psychological experience. In her case, she was aware of who she was. She was a, one of the most brilliant singers of all time, and she knew that. And she knew that she was carrying a tradition on her shoulder. And not having that voice at her disposal, I think it wreaked havoc on her psychologically. I heard you say that, that she valued that voice above everything else, about fame, about mo above money. That's correct. She was a pure artist. She wasn't an entertainer like other people. She was an artist. Her, her, her life was based upon her voice. Um, she had a remarkable voice. It, it could do anything. It could sing with, with incredible excitement. It could be very beautiful and very seductive. She had, she had the whole thing at a very high level of emotional content as well. She was her voice, and without her voice, she, had, she did not have much of a life. We heard, um, you know, the, the kind of the impromptu final performance that she gave on, on Thursday night, just singing a, a few lines from a, from a gospel song with a friend of hers on a stage. Um, when, when you heard that, I mean, could, could her voice have come back? I'm very confident after working with her over the course of a couple of years, maybe, maybe four or five years, that her voice could have come back. I got a voice back of probably 75% by the time she did her record. And that's not, with, not, not without working with her on a daily basis. Uh, if I had been with her for three or four months in a row, I think I could have gotten 95% of her voice back.